And welcome to Grandad Reviews. This video, we're going to have a look at this the Fuji XS10. And what I want to have a look at is all these buttons, dials, touchscreen. What do they, what do they do? What are their default settings? And what can we change them to? So we'll take a closer look at each button, each setting, and see uh, what we can actually change. So let's have a look. So this is the XS10. If we look on the front, got this button down here, and that is your lens release. So that button takes your lens off. This little light here, as you can see, is what's called the tally light. And if you're in video in anything, you can have that light stay on or flash. It's also the self timer light. So if you put the self timer on two seconds or 10 seconds, you can have that flash as well as the camera beep as well. Now on the front here, this scroll wheel is your front command dial wheel. And with this you in aperture priority mode, you're controlling the aperture. In shutter priority mode, you're controlling the shutter. In program mode, you're controlling program shift. So you can shift what program it's uh, picked. And in manual mode, you're controlling the aperture again. On the top here, You've obviously got the on off switch and in the middle of that we've got the shutter release button now with everything set to default if you half press the shutter it will if you and you've got it on autofocus it will do the autofocus and if you're in single shot autofocus or afs it will lock that focus on that point. It will also lock the exposure in the default setting. If you go on AFC, then when you half press and hold it, it'll bring the AFC into play. It won't lock the, the actual focus. It will follow whatever the subject's doing, coming towards or going away. And in default, it'll also lock the exposure. Now, in the menus, you can go in and change how that works. You can stop it, stop that button from doing the focus. And you can also stop it locking the exposure, which is handy if you're in AFC. Next button along, in the default setting, is a quick video mode so when you press that the camera will start videoing and it will use the settings you've got set in the photography menu video settings so that button there you can also reprogram to do other features and i'll put a whole list of what you can reprogram that button for you've then got the q button q menu button where it brings up the q menu which you can then Use the screen on the back. If I press Q, then you can use the joystick to go through and change a setting if you want it to, or you can actually use the touch screen and touch and change that setting to whatever you want. If you want to change it without the touch screen, you can use the back scroll wheel to scroll through each of its settings. And pressing the Q button again, we'll take that off. Next button along is ISO. It does exactly what it says. In the default setting, you press that. It brings up the ISO. And you can scroll around and pick whichever one you want. From there. And if you press it again, it'll go away. Also on the top, we have the rear 
control wheel. Now in manual mode, the rear control wheel will alter the shutter. Aperture priority, it'll change the exposure compensation. Shutter priority, it's exposure compensation again. In program mode, exposure compensation. If you're in video mode, on the top dial, it does the shutter speed. As you can be seen there. And that rear control wheel cannot be reprogrammed for anything else. We then got PSAM dial, so you can change it from manual mode, aperture priority, shutter priority, program, auto, SP mode, your filters, video, and then four custom slots, which you can only save photography settings in, not video settings. So that's there. Got the hot shoe obviously on the top and then on this side we've got another control dial we've also got a switch here and all that switch does is pop up built-in flash now this control dial in default so the default setting that that is depending on what that's set to would depend on what this does in default setting you can also if you've got that set to M you set it default to M this will do your exposure compensation it should be you've got to have an auto ISO right, so it's got to be on an auto so if I put it there and when it's not in M, this will do your film simulations. But if we set it to just default, then it just does your film simulations, and that's all. So next up, this button here is the drive mode. So you can do still, your high speed burst, low speed burst, ISO bracketing, white bracketing, AE bracketing, high dynamic range, your panorama, and your multiple exposure or stills just there. When you're in playback, that will do erase as well. Obviously the button next to it is playback. This wheel here is the diopter for the eyepiece. So that you adjust that to get the correct adjustment for your eyes to see. So if you look through there, look at the, the exposure display or the, the display you can see there and adjust that till it's clear, then you'll get that. And you've got the button next to it and in default that is your white balance the little window there is your sensor to switch the rear display off and move it to your eyepiece next long AEL lock so if this is in aperture priority there press that and the exposure lock will come up Switch, press it again it'll go off so it'll lock that exposure so the extra exposure doesn't change next one along is AF on so that'll actually act as if it's the shutter button half pressing so you can use that and again you can reprogram that if you want to and we've got the joystick just there we've got a menu and OK and our display which changes it actual display on the back as you go through and it's also the back button so if you're in the menu and you want to go back you can go back on there then we've got swipes on the actual screen so in default mode 
When you come down, swipe from the top, you've got your level. Swipe again, it'll go. Swipe up, you've got your histogram. It will also bring up blinkies as well. If anything's overexposed in the scene you're pointing at, go up again, it goes. If you come from the left, you've got sports viewfinder. If you go from the right, you've got the large indicators on that. So that's all the buttons on there. So that's all the buttons. And screen on the uh, Fuji XS10. Hope that helps. Uh, sometimes knowing what all the buttons do is a bit uh, confusing. And also the owner's manual that you get with the XS10 is pretty, yeah, sparse on what you can do i'll put up a list of everything that the buttons can be changed to because some can't be changed to one thing whereas the other some of the other ones can so i'll just put a list in the video on what can be changed to what so you can have a look and you can pause it and have a look at that so if you enjoy the video give it a thumbs up that helps the channel if you want to see more videos like this hit that subscribe button till next time see you later